Hi, I'm Ali Abbas. I'm the director of DECIDE, the Center for Interdisciplinary Decisions and Ethics. And part of our efforts at the Center will be reaching out to innovators and leaders in public policy and engineering and ask them about some of the decisions that they have made and some of the ethical implications that they face on their daily lives. Today, we're meeting with Eric Horvitz, Director of Research at Microsoft, and we'll be asking him about how he got into the field of decision analysis and some of the ethical implications we'll be facing in the very near future. So Eric, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the field of decision analysis. I came to, to Stanford in pursuit of principles of mind. What were the foundations of uh, intelligent thought and behavior? How do nervous systems uh, uh, work to, to imbue humans with, with, with these powers? This was a big mystery to me, uh, given my formal training in, at the time in biophysics. And within a few months, my, my growing intuition was that we would best understand the principles of mind through understanding computation and computer science. So I moved into the computer science realm. Now, back in those days, uh, in AI, artificial intelligence, uh, the focus, at least in the departments I was at at Stanford, was on the use of logic and theorem proving and what were called production systems, rule-based reasoning. It was the heyday in the mid-80s of expert systems, which had made quite a few interesting inroads in capturing the expertise uh, in different domains of leading experts, for example. Um, but I was kind of a born and bred probabilist. I viewed the world as uncertain, and I discovered later that I was kind of a, I, I kind of had a, an intrinsic sense for decision analysis, costs and benefits under uncertainty. And I happened to Ron Howard's class. Um, you know, Ron Howard teaches of fabulous um, uh, graduate introduction to decision analysis and decision theory. Um, and uh, I was enamored. I remember sitting in Ron Howard's class in the first couple of lectures, hearing what he was saying, and looking around the room thinking, oh my god, this guy, this professor, is giving away all my secrets that I've sort of used all my life, not even knowing that they were formalized and in, in, in the whole field called decision analysis. Um, the, the Foundations of decision analysis um, seemed so uh, important for any actor, agent, no matter how much knowledge or how little knowledge an agent had, for making good decisions in the world over time. Yet, I didn't see much evidence that these methods had yet seeped into AI in a deep way, at least the AI of the time. So it became quite clear to me, uh, becoming uh, a decision analyst, a decision theorist, that um, probability and utility needed to be part of the deep fabric of artificial intelligence. It would be provide the tools, the representations, and the reasoning methods that would enable limited agents, bounded agents, to do well in the world, a world rife with inescapable uncertainties. Um, and uh, so I and other graduate students that were interested in this area started to come together, almost like an invisible college, and saying we needed to seek kind of a revolution in AI where we would start thinking and applying these principles uh, uh, to address classical hard problems in AI and also, also not just apply them in ways that would, would, would immediately lead to inescapable complexity, combinatorial explosions, but using these principles themselves to guide approximations. Uh, and this led to a kind of a, I think, a, a renaissance a, a, in AI. Started out in a little a conference called Uncertainty in AI, UAI. Actually, the first one was, was here in LA in 1985. It's really been interesting to see um, the explosion of um, what I would call narrow wedges of intelligence coming to the fore. And this includes uh, new abilities um, in speech recognition, now we can talk to our smartphones and they actually understand us the first time around, typically. Um, these new enhancements in machine translation and speech recognition are being uh, combined in such services like Skype Translator, real-time translation, as if you're Captain Kirk uh, speaking to the Gorn uh, on some distant planet. Um, we're seeing uh, faces recognized uh, in Facebook, uh, 
uh, faces recognized in our standard camera viewfinders. And cars are even beginning to, to drive themselves, or maybe almost, like my car right now drives quite far without me touching the, the steering wheel, brake, or accelerator. So Eric, what about the ethical implications um, for artificial intelligence and automation in decision making? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I do think there'll be uh, quite a few interesting uh, advances uh, and influences of the march of, of AI technology on the world, on people and society. Uh, this is the reason uh, why we set up the 100-year study on artificial intelligence at Stanford as a philanthropic endeavor um, that's actually endowed to carry this uh, study well beyond the 100 years. In fact, uh, it's endowed to continue to, to be uh, in force as long as Stanford exists. And the idea is to, to lay out sets of topics uh, and to every five years have a study panel uh, do a, a significant report uh, to provide uh, an analysis, summary, and guidance to different segments. One topic is uh, looking at autonomy, uh, autonomous systems, and how they might be used in society, what ethical challenges will come to the fore. Uh, for example, um, thinking about more general intelligence is making decisions in the open world. Um, what ethical models will guide them? How can they learn, for example, when they come to unforeseen situations to understand the way a human being would understand trades uh, in the ethical realm? Uh, to understand, for example, when they don't, don't know enough themselves to continue to be autonomous and they need to reach out to people for advice or assistance. Um, how could these systems be safe uh, for humanity uh, in short-term settings and in the long-term as they grow more powerful and intelligent? So more globally, it's important to think about where it is we apply our talent. Where do we, what are the fruits of our creativity and um, our innovation? Uh, how do they influence society more broadly? and even guiding what we do by where we think we'll do the greatest good. So I think it's an ethical prerogative uh, to go deeper with AI, um, at least when it comes to uh, broader applications. What ethical challenges are, uh, you might, are coming to the fore based on us not applying um, machine intelligence and decision theoretic methods in the real world when we can? Uh, for example, um, in the automobile industry, transportation, there are about 30,000 deaths per year based on car accidents in the U.S. alone. So nearly 100 people a day are, are being killed. Um, these could be addressed with, with, uh, with automation and semi-autonomous automation of the kind um, uh, you would have with automatic braking systems, for example, automatic alerting systems to, to uh, make people aware of potential uh, dangers ahead. 400,000 people in hospitals are dying each year because of avoidable errors, avoidable. Um, we already have methods that have been uh, applied in, in limited domains um, that show how certain kinds of errors could be addressed by not acting quickly and by not working to understand the, the, the challenges with translating technologies, even ones available today. Uh, into the real world, um, we're seeing many, many deaths that could be avoided. It's important for us to be thinking about ethics at every turn uh, in terms of the implications and influences of the technologies we develop and the scientific ideas we explore. Um, this is especially true, I think, for machine intelligence moving forward. I expect it to have incredible influences in the world, and I like to study this through larger mechanisms like the 100-year study on AI. But also individually, we need to all be aware and, and pursue these concepts and ideas. That said, I'm extremely optimistic about where we're taking technology. Uh, I think it'll benefit humankind in myriad ways. Uh, so I'm very excited about the future. Eric, thank you very much for your time. This has been great. Uh, it's great to look at your perspectives on decision making and ethics, and especially how they relate to artificial intelligence in the future. Thank you very <laughs> okay. much, Eric. It's thank been you. A pleasure. To learn more about our efforts, uh, check out our website at decide.usc.edu where you'll see more videos, editorials, and other research items related to decisions and ethics.